My name is Allie Sorley and I am the Education Outreach Coordinator at the Alabama Museum of Natural History. I am also the president of EEAA, which is the Environmental Educators Association of Alabama. The Alabama Museum of Natural History has been connected with EEAA for many years. Uh, we do environmental education program as part of our field science programs as well as our in-classroom programs and so this association is, is full of educators from across the state who do the same content and are as passionate about it and feel it is as important as we do at the museum. I'm Claire Death now. I'm a retired school teacher, an environmentalist, and an author. I was a teacher of the gifted. I taught in inner city schools, and at one of the schools, Putnam Middle, I decided that we needed to go outside, but we didn't need to take field trips every day or couldn't. So we decided to build a nature trail on the school grounds and the students and I got some funding from the Neighborhood Association and began building the trail and outdoor classroom. And now the Alabama Audubon Society discovered the trail and decided it was a very good sanctuary for brown-headed nut hatches and that they were going to develop it into a showpiece for the kids at school and for the neighborhood. So that's a real honor for me to have something as valuable and um, that will be a legacy for future kids to use. Each one of the people who attend this conference will be reaching out to, in the end, hundreds of other people. And in this way, we are educating and um, helping to create wise stewards, stewards of our beautiful natural heritage. She plans and hosts Discover Fest, a community event where experts share their environmental innovations and demonstrate how young leaders are needed in future jobs, created to celebrate the Discovering Alabama Model School program along with Earth Week, and was heavily involved in Woodland Forest's selection as an Alabama Green Ribbon School in 2018, Woo! and then after that, receiving the U.S. Department of Education Green Ribbon School Award. Let's all congratulate Diana Marchant on her work. My name's Diana Marchin. I'm the STEM coordinator at Woodland Forest Elementary School. We met Doug Phillips at an outdoor classroom expo and we were kind of looking for things to do a little extra special at our school because we had an outdoor area, a couple acres that were still wooded and we had heard about his involvement in forestry and going out and hiking and things like that and he had some things going with children already at different places. So we kind of cornered him. <laughs> and started talking to him and trying to pick his brain a little bit and then he turned to us and said, oh well, we've been thinking about or I've been thinking about doing a model school. Would you guys be interested in doing that? And of course we said absolutely because we're both in Tuscaloosa. So Willow Forest Elementary is in Tuscaloosa and the University of Alabama and the museum's all in Tuscaloosa. So it worked out as a great partnership. Being a model school, it gave us some extra permission to do things that we might not have been able to do before. That's the part I like. We were able to uh, be creative and do some uh, initiatives and create some outdoor classrooms that we might not have even thought about. So he was able to bring with Pam Sloan as the outreach coordinator. Uh, she came over and we developed a curriculum so that each grade level had a curriculum that we did together. The teachers all bought in and we wrote that special for our school. And then the teachers started implementing that in the classroom. So they had classroom lessons and, you know, kind of normal classroom lessons. And then we had experiences outside. The students that you may think have behavior problems or attention issues, they were the ones that benefited the most because it was a lot of hands-on. It wasn't sitting down, it wasn't lectures, they weren't having to listen. So of course the students that were good students, we say, you know, that catch on well and easily and do well in the classroom, they excelled in that environment. But then the students that kind of struggled academically and weren't maybe as attentive in the classroom were very attentive when we did lessons outside hands-on and just exciting things you know for them so it, it's been beneficial for everybody it's got its own little parasite eating at it I've really benefited from coming to um, this conference for the EEAA because I had my mentor you know Pam Sloan and Discovering Alabama and I had that connection with the University of Alabama the Natural History Museum but you know we we did things the way we saw we were doing things but when you come to a conference like this there's people from Auburn there's people from North Alabama there's people from South Alabama and there's other people people doing things at other schools so we are collectively able to share our experiences. 
So I shared some ideas of things that work at my school and they shared some things that work at their school. You know, it gives me ideas to think beyond myself, <laughs> think outside the box maybe. So it's just a great way to share and be collaborative. One of the reasons we really like to come to programs and conferences like this is because we get to see people from all over the state in one place and we get to learn from them in one space. We can be a part of outreach events that are happening down south, up in the mountains, all over the place and then in turn those sites can come to us. We get to connect with educators so that we can visit their classrooms and bring a little bit of Tuscaloosa and what we teach to their space but also adapt our lessons for their specific geography and geology and, and, and ecology that they have in their backyards. And we can do all of that because of the partnerships that are created in, in places like this. <laughs>